minus eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Forty seconds, a little over forty seconds into the flight, we are seeing thirty-three out of thirty-three Raptor engines ignited. Boosters pushing us downrange over the Gulf. Next milestone coming up in just under ten seconds is going to be Max Q, that Max Aerodynamic Pressure. Max Q. All right, so we're through max Q. That's the, the heaviest stresses it's kind of seeing on the way up. Wow, that was pretty incredible. <laughs> I'm still recovering. <laughs> that was amazing. Beautiful views of the vehicle on ascent, pitching downrange away from the launch tower. Next thing coming up is hot staging. So we're gonna look for six engines to ignite on ship while we're still attached to the top of the booster. We'll see all but those three center engines shut down on booster. We're hearing the initial call that we are go for booster catch back here at the launch tower. Coming up now on hot staging, the ship's engines will ignite while still attached to the Super Heavy booster, and also while Super Heavy booster will still be under power itself. The clamps holding the two stages together are going to release, and Starship second stage engines will Booster ignite. engine cut off. Ship engine start up. Stage separation. Boost back burn start up. There we go. Ship engines, all six Raptors ignited. We're doing that boost back burn. The plus clock. You can see our boost back burn. We're down to three engines on the boost back burn. Uh, and you can see ship on the right-hand side of that telemetry with six engines lit, continuing its ascent to orbit already over 100 kilometers in altitude. The booster 87 kilometers in altitude and continue it on the right-hand side of your screen there, just separating off of from the right-hand side of the booster. You can also see the booster doing its liquid oxygen dump there, which is exactly what we would expect for it to do as the booster gets itself configured for the landing here. Now, meanwhile... And there we hear nominal trajectories all around. And uh, Dan and Kate, we're at five minutes, uh, 15 seconds here uh, into the flight. Everything looking good for the Super Heavy and for Starship today. Uh, what's it like there at Starbase as we get ready to catch? This coming from one of our long range tracking cameras, we're able to see the hot stage separate and fly away. So coming up in just about 30 seconds, we're going to look for the landing burn. We're going to command to those 13 inner and middle ring engines to turn on. 13 initially, they bleed off all of that velocity as we're slowing down from supersonic speeds, eventually moting down to only three engines for that precision flight into the tower. Right now, Booster using its four hypersonic grid fins to help guide itself through this atmospheric entry back for its precision, precision landing at the launch site. Once again, we're gonna ignite first the center 13 engines. We should see that coming up here momentarily. Engines and startup. This is gonna come down to three engines as the Booster slows down for its landing. And we just heard the sonic boom. What an incredible sight 
to see the super heavy booster gliding down booster into the chopstick down. arms once again. Take advantage of the booster. Stuck the landing. Wow. <laughs> that will never get old. All right. We saw 12 out of 13 light for that landing burn. Booster still able to make its way with that final precision burn on the three engines. You again, a million shout outs to all of our avionics team who make these cameras possible for us. That's looking uh, right down inside essentially the skirt area of ship where you can see a pretty good view of all six Raptors, especially those three inner ones, one of which we're going to hopefully relight a little bit later. And we just saw some engines go out. It looks like we are losing attitude control of the ship. Ship FTS is saved. So we're still Getting video down from the ship, you can see we've lost several engines and we've lost attitude control of the vehicle. So we'll continue to stick with it. All right, so coming back with you real quick. So can confirm we did lose contact with the ship. Um, unfortunately, this happened last time too. So we've got some practice at this. Now we've got a lot of 
measures in place, like debris response areas where we coordinate very closely with air traffic control. We have a lot of measures put before we ever launch a rocket to make sure that we're keeping the public safe. Those worked last time and they're actively in work right now. So just to recap real quick, everything we saw, we lifted off right at the top of our window, essentially at 5.30 p.m. Central Time. Booster was able to get us all the way up into space, made its way back here. It's sitting on the tower right behind us, our third ever catch. Starship ignited all six of its Raptor engines. It was just about 20 or 30 seconds away. We'll get exact times from the end of its ascent burn when we started to see some engines go out on ship, eventually lost attitude control, and then lost contact with the ship shortly after. So obviously a lot to go through, a lot to dig through. We're going to go right at it. The primary reason we do these flight tests is to learn. We have some more to learn about this vehicle, but we're going to be right back here in the not too distant future, and we're going to get a ship to space. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We fly to learn, and we're learning a lot. And as is the case with developmental programs such as the Starship program, progress isn't always linear. So at this point, we're going to close out our webcast for the day. But before we do, we'd like to give a shout out to our viewers, of course, as well as our partners, uh, both here in Cameron, excuse me, here in Cameron County and around the world.